All right guys, so in this video, we're gonna go through the process of making a bunch of these recreational crab traps. We're gonna go through the whole process. I'm gonna show you start to finish how to make these things. I'm gonna tell you where I got the material, how much money I've got into them. We're gonna talk about regulations uh, and everything that you need to know to go recreational crabbing in Florida. For each trap, you're gonna need about 10 feet of wire. Now I ordered all of this stuff from I think it was Lee's Fish and Supply in Tampa. Uh, I got 150 foot spool of coated hex wire. Uh, I got 3 8 stainless steel hog rings. I got one pound of that. Um, and a bunch of these uh, escape rings right here. We're gonna talk about that here in a little bit. I got a bunch of trap hooks, bungee cord, buoys, all of that stuff for a I can't remember exactly what the cost was, but it was right around 250 bucks, and I got 15 traps out of that. So when you compare that to you know, having to buy these traps at 50 bucks a pop, you can save quite a bit of money if you're gonna be building uh, quite a few traps. So I'm gonna go ahead and just put my materials list or my orders list in the uh, video description down below so you guys can go down there, take a look at what I ordered, and then just use that to, to help you figure out what you need to order if you're gonna be making multiple traps. All right guys, so to get started on these traps, you're gonna need two pieces of wire that are four feet long. Uh, they need to be cut exactly the same length. Uh, and the easiest way that I've found to do that is just to count out the, uh, the hexagons. And so when, I, when I'm counting this stuff, I'm counting these in the same row. They go at kind of a diagonal, but if you count them that way, you're gonna get all messed up. So make sure that you count one, and then you have a line, and then you go two, have a line, three. Uh, you count 15. So you'll go 15, and then you'll cut the very next one. So you have 15 whole hexagons per side. So you need two of those. You need two pieces like this that have two whole ones, and that's what I'm talking about in a row. This one and this one are in a row. Going this way, you're on a diagonal. You count that way, you're gonna mess it up. One, two, you need two of these. These are gonna be your funnels. And then you need a piece that has four. One, two, three, four. This is gonna be your bait box, but this you're gonna cut this in half, so this is actually gonna make two bait boxes. So we'll go ahead and start uh, with the bait box. So for the bait box, I've gone one, two, three, four tall and one foot wide. And we'll start on a funnel. So just fold that over. Get you a couple of hog rings. These are three eighths rings, and they they're perfect size for this trap. So we're gonna take this thing, fold it over, ring it right there and then we're gonna taper it in a little bit. So now you've just got this piece that kind of steps in on both sides like that, kind of football shaped. So this is gonna be the top and the bottom. We need to bend these things so that they fold right. So I'm gonna count down one, two, three, four, and then I'm gonna bend on the very next one. And it's helpful if you have a board or something you can bend over. And this two by four here is gonna be perfect for that. So count back one, two, three, four, bend on the very next one right there. Three, 
So this next step that I'm gonna do is optional. Uh, this is gonna be, I'm gonna add a stiffening wire to one of the edges, uh, and this is gonna be where we're gonna empty the trap. Um, you don't have to have this. You can just put a door on here and empty the traps out that way. Uh, but this is a little bit quicker, and so we're gonna go ahead and do it. So now we'll go ahead and add one of our funnels, kind of open it up a little bit. So to put the bait box on here, I'm just gonna cut one of these hexes out. And leave the prongs to tie with. So I've got a little hole there and I'll stick this right over that hole. go bait box is in the bottom of the trap is done so now we take the top put it over and then we'll line up the edges put some hog rings on those Now we can start fastening on the edges. I like to stagger thing, these things in, out, in, out, all the way. You want all these things going inside the trap. You don't want anything poking out and to stick you when you go to work your traps. All right, so it's all, all the, all the uh, edges are tied up. The only place that's open right here in the front where we're gonna empty the trap at. Just need to put a couple of uh, bungee, or put a bungee cord on here with a trap hook to close this down. And then we will uh, put our little window in there that is required. So if you got some little gaps here on the side, you just bend the wire down a little bit. And 
That should close it off pretty doggone good. So we'll need to throw a couple of escape rings in here. We gotta have three rings in Florida. Minimum of, of uh, what are these? Two and three eighths inside diameter. All right, so this trap is done. Got uh, two entrances, got our bait box in there, got three escape rings. Uh, we've got a little window to, uh, that we're gonna lace up with jute. Uh, the reason that uh, you're required to have this is if in case the uh, trap gets lost, um, that jute's gonna rot out and the trap doesn't keep killing uh, crabs. And then our place where we empty it, Right there. Go ahead and fit it out with a buoy. Now most of the traps that I made don't have uh, bait box door covers. They're just wide open like that. And so the bait box actually goes on the bottom of the trap. You throw your bait, your mullet, uh, croaker, whatever you got, chicken backs in there, and then you put this thing down and just the water pressure as the trap sinks will hold that bait up in there. There's no real need for a trap door uh, or a, a, a bait box door unless you're going to be pulling these things multiple times in a day and you don't want to reset the uh, or rebait them. So in Florida each person can have up to five recreational traps and it has to be marked with your name, your address, and your trap ID number which you can get from the FWC website. I'll talk a little bit more about that later when we talk about regs. So in addition to that, each trap has to have three of these uh, escape rings and some sort of decomposable window. What I did was just take a piece of wire to stiffen up the trap wire, make a, uh, a rectangle out of that, and then we just laced it up with jute. For recreational traps, you gotta have your buoy minimum six inches diameter, and it has to be clearly marked with an R for recreation. So to set crab traps in Florida, you need a saltwater fishing license and the blue crab trap add-on. That's where you get that unique trap ID number that you can put on your tag here. You get that from the FWC website. Now these regulations are specific to Florida and I might have missed something, so I would definitely go to the FWC website, check out uh, the requirements for the, the trap specifications, uh, the license requirements, all that thing, because you know I may have missed something and these regulations are subject to change. So definitely go check that out. All right guys, that's gonna do it for this video. I hope you learned something and enjoyed. If you did, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Uh, we're gonna be in Florida still for a little bit, so more fishing. Uh, maybe some hog hunting and things like that. And then we're headed back up to Idaho. We're going to be talking about traditional bows, uh, bow hunting. And then uh, before too long, it's going to be September. And we're going to be chasing elk in the Idaho mountains. So stick around and we'll see you next time.